What is up guys, Joe Snow right here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to configure the uh, iOS 10.1.1 jailbreak uh, project in order to work with iPhone 6. So we're going to also change the offset and we're going to continue what we started in this video that I published uh, today, four hours ago, in which we talked about the iOS 10.1.1 exploit that was finally released as the first public exploit for iOS 10.1.1 and also about the jailbreaking. Well, you need to watch this video first. If you didn't see this video, go ahead, press pause in here, see this video and then come back because you will not be able to understand. Right, then if you did, let's start. This is the uh, instruction sheet and I told you, you should probably read this first. Well. It boils down to the situation that if you want to actually make this work for iPhone 6, for example, you need to change a couple of offsets. Now, in order to change the offsets, what you need? I prepared myself the things because I did it already. So, what you need is the kernel cache. The kernel cache is found inside the IPSW. So, you're going to need an IPSW. LZSSDEC.CPP And you want to uh, compile this thing this way. G++ this one, dash O, copy the handle, desktop here, paste, and LZSS DEC, like this. This is how you compile this um, C++ application in order to make it a binary that actually works, because if you don't make a binary, it won't simply work and you cannot find it pre-compiled. And as you can see, we built it right here and now we're able to, to use it with the, um, the terminal application. But you won't be able to, uh, to do this if you want to do this on a Windows. So keep in mind, you need a Mac for this, right? Well, actually the uh, offset, are easy to be found. You need to actually download AIDA Pro. I tried in um, in Hopper Disassembler and there is no point in doing that because it's harder to do it in, um, in Hopper Disassembler, but it boils down to the situation that you need to decompress it, to decompress the kernel cache. And then after you decompress it, you have a couple of tutorials on my channel. I'm going to link them down below on how to decompress the uh, kernel. You're going to be able to load it inside the uh, AIDA Pro or inside the uh, Hopper Disassembler and you're going to be able to find everything including the strings and so on. So let me try to find it uh, to the version. This is going to get uh, parsed in a couple of seconds. Just give it a couple of seconds and it will show you the version. Right, so after uh, Ida Pro or Hopper visualizes the, uh, the code, it will boil down to this situation. You're going to need this. So I'm going to let it in, uh, at, at this point, in this situation, I'm going to go back. We're not going to find the offsets manually because the offsets were already found by a couple of um, engineers on Reddit, but most of the offsets are the same. So uh, from what I see on uh, Reddit, most of them are the same thing as the, um, the normal offsets that are in the app. So how are we going to modify the binaries in order to work? Right, you need to download the project Go to this page, scroll till the end right here and click download on this thing. You will download it, take it, take it on a desktop, do this and you will have a folder in here. You can now remove this. Right, so inside here you have the uh, Xcode project that you need to open. So open the Xcode project, click open if it asks you. If you don't have Xcode, you need to download it first. Right, and it is going to be open like this, right. You need to open the, uh, the folder in here. Press one time with the mouse on this and you need to configure the team. I'm going to select my team. If you don't have any team, add an account. You need to add a free Apple uh, account, the one you use for the uh, store. And now you need to configure to fix this errors. So you have two errors in here that prevent you from, uh, from starting the app. You're going to see, if I press compile in here, it's going to give me uh, errors. Build failed, as you can see. So we need to, f uh, to first fix the errors. How? I'm going to write here GeoSnow. Uh, because you need an iron fire in here and then on the uh, cap -up capabilities, I don't know how to, how to say that, right, you're going to need to uncheck this 
or whatever it is checked and create a new one. Click that plus and create a new one with GeoSnow. In my case, you will have anything else. Mac uh, portal, right? Click OK. Uh, actually, it did it. Let me go back in here. So make sure you don't write with capitals. I uh, the, the mistake I did was to write GeoSnow with uh, capital G. Just write everything with uh, small errors and you will be all right. Don't mind these errors, they're not here anymore. Right, so uh, I'm going to go back in here and you have a folder that is empty. You need to fill that folder with all the binaries required by the jailbreak. So in order to do that, you're going to download them separately from another um, source. Let me try to do that. Okay, I'm going to navigate up in here and somewhere here there should be a link in this. This is the link. Jonathan uh, Levin's files and you're going to scroll a little bit and you'll find these the 64-bit uh, TGZ pack Right, you're going to download all the binaries because these are required by the jailbreak in order to perform various tasks You have a couple of them for example RM which removes um, You have shell you have you have everything you need in order to, to start apps those are uh, mandatory on a jailbreak, so we have to add them as well. Right, so uh, I'm going to extract everything. It will boil, that, boil down to a folder that looks like this, containing a couple of uh, binaries. Now, if you open this on a jailbroken device, you're going to see that it, uh, it contains all these files, so it's not something new. Right, I'm going to uh, navigate back, take all these folders at once, sorry, without the uh, DS store, and put them all in here. What? Sorry. Like this. Make sure you do not rename that thing. And it will copy up everything in here. So it will uh, contain all the binaries required. Now it's just a matter of things you need to do. It's the, the most important part. Go to the offsets.c and here you have only the application was created to only support the iPad mini 2 and the iPod touch 6th generation. So how are we going to fix this? Uh, if I connect my device, I'm going to show you the actual reaction of it, right? So um, I connected an iPhone 6 in here and I'm going to try to run it. Ah, uh, heck, no. I, uh, oh, I opened the uh, simulator. All right. Please unlock your... It's locked? Oh yeah, it's locked. How comes it locked? Anyways. Right. Then you, if you connect your device, uh, you should not uh, lock it. So it has not to be locked in the uh, passcode screen. And uh, it should be detected automatically by the computer. All right. Set up. And I'm going to start to, just to show you what happens. So I'm going to go to view, debug area, activate console. Because I want to... Uh, to see the console, you need to do that as well. You're going to get a couple of uh, warnings in here. Do not mind them. You you only mind errors. Uh, warnings are warnings. Just just don't mind them. Right. I want to see what happens if I do not configure the device. We're going to get something like uh, this is most likely not going to work or something like this. It won't recognize the iPhone itself, right? So as you can see, we fixed the um, signing issues and the, uh, the building was successful, it will install a, uh, an app. The application is entirely white. You're not going to, to see anything on the screen but white. Uh, but you're going to see a lot of things in here. So as you can see, it says uh, file it to uh, register whatever. So this is how uh, what it says. At first, uh, machine iPhone uh, 7.2, do not recognize this platform. This is an unknown kernel build. The offsets are likely to be incorrect and it's very unlikely this exploit will work. Well, it will start trying to work in here. We still need to fix some things, but in order to make it entirely compatible, you need to change uh, the offsets, but you also need to add the compatibility. And I'm going to show you how. So how you do this? At first, I'm going to uh, remove anything from here and it's fairly simple. You need to create a new void in here. Between all these, create a new void called init. Uh, underscore iPhone 6 um, 10 1 1 uh, 14 B 150 
in my case because it's 150 uh, make it a function and then add the um, the curly braces right and between the curly braces you need to copy everything from the iPod touch because those structures are the same in here you need to copy them in here right now from what I can see in in the IDA Pro and from what I can see on the uh, reddit the offsets for the iPhone um, 6 are the same for the iPod touch 6th generation so the same Alproc offset and the same kernel process offset in here and all these should be the same so on other devices you do not need to touch these these are the same on all devices running 10.1.1 you only need to change these this is what you find in IDA Pro it's a little bit more complicated process and because most of you are beginners I don't want to um, to put you on the risk of your devices so right what you're going to do is setting offsets 4 and I'm going to write iPhone 6 I'm going to write something in here geo snows iPhone 6 right and now we need to make the uh, program to understand the uh, the command to know what to do with that function so with that method how are we going to do that? Well, in here on the if statements, you need to create a new conditional called uh, called if and write strstr in your um, bra braces machine. Sorry, machine. I can copy from the uh, the app uh, upper thing, but yeah, I just like to code it myself. iPhone seven. Sorry iPhone 7.2 in this case because iPhone 6 is 7.2 if you don't do this correctly it will not be able to recognize the uh, device which is not good right so you can as I said you can copy these from here just to save time and uh, okay we're going to need to go here back in the hopper and copy what we have in here that's why we disassemble it in the first place and probably it will match but we can't take any risks in this yeah, it will match. But anyways, sometimes it should not. So this is it. Right. Then what we need to do, this is a known build. We're going to just change this. Right here. Up until this point, this device is an iPhone 6 and is known. Offsets are present. Right. And we need to change this int whatever with the actual name of our function that we created, which is up here. Right. We need to copy this with all with the um, the braces, but not with the uh, curly braces. Right. Uh, and I'm going to go in here, iPhone 7.2, and replace this one from here. Make sure you leave the semicolon. And everything should be all right, I think. Yeah, I'm going to just comment it. This is for iPhone 6. And now the program is basically supporting the iPhone 6 successfully. Now, um, you can do that for any other device. And I'm going to show you uh, the device is hard on. It will detect it. Well, I still need to fix a couple of things. Uh, probably it won't work for me very well because the uh, device itself is iCloud bypassed and a lot of um, um, a lot of demons know that inside the device and will block the, um, the thing but I'm going to show you that it detects the device successfully using this method so just go ahead and try it right uh, it will uh, of course build it Build succeeded and you need to watch on this console on the device you will not be able to see anything but white uh, keep in mind it won't work from the first time it says right here that uh, it might work from the second attempt or from the first time but sometimes it won't simply work from the first time because it works 50 50 I'm going to show you what what I mean right uh, here it says that the kernel exploit is only around 50% reliable which means that it can be improved but for the moment you need to try again and again and again it's exactly the same thing that happens on the iCloud bypassing right so um, yeah but as you can see in here this device is an iPhone 6 and it's known offsets are present and it's detected automatically the, uh, the machine so it should be good to go but for me it gets in here uh, it gets on um, 
at this point and killed power for some reason. I will try to investigate it, try it on your device, on your device it will most likely work because your device it's not iCloud bypassed. Anyways, this is how you do that guys and I really hope this helped you. Uh, it's pretty good that we don't have to mess with, um, with IDA Pro in this video because some of you might get confused and uh, actually kill uh, the... Um, the device and you need to restart it and so on but this is basically it do not forget to subscribe to stay updated and i'm going to keep you informed whenever a real tool for the jailbreaking appears because this is more for developers and you should try this only if you cannot wait anymore most likely as i told you in the previous video somebody will create a polished version of it available for everybody but this is how we change the offsets because some of you asked me to show you peace out